Coach, as you guys kind of get started this week, what are some of your initial impressions of, of Rutgers and the, the uh, battle they present on Saturday? Yeah, it's going to be quite the challenge. We knew that when we scheduled it. Um, you know, Coach Peichel's done a tremendous job. I think he's been up there for seven or eight years, and he's built a, a brand of basketball that people that follow the game respect. You know, it's they got a toughness about them. Um, you know, they, they play together. They've got, you know, a core group of, of guys that uh, have been there, done that for him, and um, he's just really done a really good job uh, with the program. And, you know, they got great size. They protect the rim at an elite level. Um, they got some dynamic scoring to go along with it, and they're getting healthy. You know, um, they just got a kid back that hadn't been playing, and he was, you know, a core player for them in years past. And uh, they're getting healthier, uh, seems like, every week. Paul, go ahead for two. I'm sure you preach, preach it to them all the time, and I heard you mention it uh, to us after the game Sunday and also on the post-game show. But just to get DJ and Cam to where they are aggressive and attack the basket instead of settling for perimeter shots. And I know sometimes DJ ends up with the ball in his hand with the shot clock's running out and a lot of those shots he has to take to try to beat the clock. But how how important is that for this team's offense? Yeah, it's huge. You know, they, uh, especially DJ, he obviously, you know, gets college basketball at this point in his life. And I think he has figured out you know, a style individually for him to play within the framework of, of what we're trying to do to be most effective. Um, and he's playing right now for us, you know, how we've been envisioning him playing in terms of getting downhill more, you know, not settling for the pull up, you know, uh, not picking the ball up too early, you know, fighting for uh, pickups closer to the rim if it's not a, a drive that finishes in a you know a natural layup etc and then when he does you know to use his length and his vision to find other people and create scoring opportunities for his teammates and then you know sometimes like a lot of players when that shot clock gets to 10 9 8 you know, and they got the ball in their hands, you know, they feel like it's time to go shot clock mode. And um, he got into a, a bad habit of that last year and even, um, you know, sometimes this fall. But I think he's he's learned and he's grew from that and he understands that there's still a lot of time left, you know, for us to figure out, you know, trying to manufacture a good shot as the shot clock is, is dwindling down. And I think that's been the most growth that I've seen with him is just um, just being more aggressive of getting straight downhill, um, playing north and south, not east and west, and not settling, um, you know, for, for mid-range pull-ups. Um, and, and even just if it's going to take him, you know, three dribbles to get to the charge circle uh, instead of two, you know, take that extra dribble. You know, get 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 a little bit deeper and um, just just be more physical. And the thing that stuck out the most was his willingness to crash the offensive glass in our last outing. You know, he was rewarded, you know, with some offensive rebounds. And sometimes you crash and aren't, but hopefully because he was rewarded in this particular game, you know, that will give him even more reason to continue to do that because that really really helps us. You know, our, our twos and ones obviously don't you know, scoop up a lot of offensive rebounds. It's really not <clears throat> part of our scheme. But we need him to join the fours and fives, and that gives us, um, you know, a better chance to get those second chance points. Obviously kind of a unique deal playing two days before Christmas. What will, what will y'all you'll get any time off for Christmas holidays or what's kind of the schedule after Rutgers? Yeah, we'll, we'll uh, go our separate ways for the most part uh, when that game's complete. And then we don't play until the 31st, so we still have a chance to have a nice break, uh, which I'm a big proponent of. I think um, that's where they need to be. They need to be with their families celebrating uh, Christmas. And um, equally important from a basketball perspective is just to get away from it a little bit and, and get off their, their legs and just kind of rest their bodies and their minds and um, enjoy, you know, the holiday um, with their families. And uh, But we'll bring them back on the 27th, um, you know, that evening. So 
we'll still have you know three and a half uh, full days of, of preparation for our, our game against Bethune Cookman. We'll go to coaches left with Benjamin and then Justin. Uh, Paul asked about Cam and DJ. Uh, what have you seen from them in terms of uh, the way they, they play together on the court, their chemistry, and how it's continued to grow? Obviously, they've been playing together since they were in high school. Yeah, I didn't really answer Paul's um, two-part question or two-person question, but I will now. Um, Cam was, Cam was um, ticked off. I could use a different word. That's probably uh, more appropriate. Uh, he just he had an edge about him before the ball was tipped. Uh, you'd have to ask him why. I'm not sure. I've got uh, my own um, thoughts on it. But um, he's better that way. You know, some guys aren't. Some guys need to be more chill and more relaxed. And uh, Cam needs his motor running hot. He needs to be, um, you know, just aggressive from, from, from the jump. And, and, you know, I'm not sure exactly, like I said, how he got to that point before the ball was tipped, but I could see it. And that influenced his play on the court. And when we're our best, you know, I don't think we expect him to have a stat line like that every single night, but we expect him to play with that kind of aggressiveness in that kind of athleticism and just knowing that, you know, that's his responsibility for us. You know, he has to be, you know, that energy warrior, if you will, and a guy that, you know, plays so hard that everybody feels like, man, I better join in, you know, or he might get mad at me or uh, whatever the case may be. And we've been encouraging him behind the scenes to be more vocal with his teammates. Um, they will listen to you. They respect you. Um, and he's been doing that, and he did it in, in that game. And then even, like I said, I just um, – when people watch him, you know, when his teammates watch him, you know, uh, I got to believe they think, hey, I better get with it too. Um, otherwise, you know, I, I don't – Look like on Sunday and, and with I guess Andrew Guy and, and Trey. Not observation or is, is that some I guess like the look you like in terms of? I have when no idea. Like I said after the game, each game unfolds as it does. It wasn't a concerted plan that we had. I uh, didn't talk about that with anyone on my staff. Um, you know, I don't, I don't go into each game saying I'm going to play this many guys. Uh, I go into each game and let it unfold the way it does. And based on feel and suggestions, um, you know, we sub and um, et cetera. But um, I have no idea. You know, we're a long ways away from that. Go back to the cameras and John in the white shirt. Chris, um, when it comes to Tolu, you've been talking about, you know, him easing his way back into things with practice and all that good stuff uh, with kind of SEC play approaching and here sooner than you know all of us know it do you have kind of a I don't know maybe like a target date in mind for him and um, yeah yeah I got a target date today <laughs> but unfortunately I don't have a I don't have a vote you know they don't ask me when I want him back um, it's entirely up to the trainers and, and the doctors and Tolu himself and um, you know he's got a progression that he has to go through um, but you know, it's still going to be a while. I mean, he's, he's um, got, got a lot of things he's got to do. He's just kind of, you know, got in the shallow end, you know, the past couple of days prior to the North Texas game. And, you know, we'll, we, we'll reconvene today for, for physical practice. We were off yesterday and, um, you know, see where he's at. But, um, you know, there's no, no date that I've been told yet. Go ahead, Steph. No, with, with Keyshawn, kind of the ability he has to stretch the floor as well and, and knock down some three-pointers, we haven't really seen it too much this season. How much of that is just him trying to get some rhythm, get, get some consistent playing time to be able to kind of find his stroke from outside? I mean, Keyshawn is a capable shooter. Uh, his biggest strength is just his overall skill set. You know, he can do a little bit of everything. He, he's an excellent passer. He's got great vision. Uh, he's got good feel, uh, especially as a, a pick and roll guy. You know, he, he knows where the space is or isn't, and so he reads it appropriately in terms of it should be a roll or a pop. And 
you know, sometimes that's hard for kids on the fly to, to see that. And for some guys that can't shoot the ball as well, I mean, their choices are limited too. They need to be rolling more than popping. But he, you know, Murph has the ability to, to do different things, stretch the floor, and, and he's unique enough that he can actually be both a screener and a receiver 